Acadia French, Acadie, was a colony of New France in northeastern North America that included parts of eastern Quebec, the Maritime Provinces, and modern-day Maine to the Kennebec River. During much of the 17th and early 18th centuries, Norridgewock on the Kennebec River and Costini at the end of the Penobscot River were the southernmost settlements of Acadia. The actual specification by the French government for the territory refers to lands bordering the Atlantic coast, roughly between the 40th and 46th parallels. Later, the territory was divided into the British colonies that became Canadian provinces and American states. The population of Acadia included members of the Wabanaki Confederacy and descendants of emigrants from France i.e., Acadians. The two communities intermarried, which resulted in a significant portion of the population of Acadia being Métis. The first capital of Acadia, established in 1605, was Port Royal. A British force from Virginia attacked and burned down the town in 1613, but it was later rebuilt nearby, where it remained the longest-serving capital of French Acadia until the British siege of Port Royal in 1710. Over 74 years there were six colonial wars, in which English and later British interests tried to capture Acadia starting with King William's War in 1689. During these wars, along with some French troops from Quebec, some Acadians, the Wabanaki Confederacy, and French priests continuously raided New England settlements along the border in Maine. While Acadia was officially conquered in 1710 during Queen Anne's War, present-day New Brunswick and much of Maine remained contested territory. Present-day Prince Edward Island and Cape Breton as agreed under Article 13 of the Treaty of Utrecht remained under French control. By militarily defeating the Wabanaki Confederacy and the French priests, present-day Maine fell during Father Rail's War. During King George's War, France and New France made significant attempts to regain mainland Nova Scotia. After Father Le Loutre's War, present-day New Brunswick fell to the British. Finally, during the French and Indian War the North American theatre of the Seven Years' War, both Ile Royale and Ile Saint-Jean fell to the British in 1758. Today, the term Acadia is used to refer to regions of North America that are historically associated with the lands, descendants, or culture of the former French region. It particularly refers to regions of the Maritimes with French roots, language, and culture, primarily in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, the Magdalen Islands and Prince Edward Island, as well as in Maine. It can also be used to refer to the Acadian diaspora in southern Louisiana, a region also referred to as Acadiana. In the abstract, Acadia refers to the existence of a French culture in any of these regions. People living in Acadia, and sometimes former residents and their descendants, are called Acadians, also later known as Cajuns, the English mis pronunciation of Cadians, after resettlement in Louisiana. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The origin of the designation Acadia is credited to the explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano, who on his 16th century map applied the ancient Greek name, Arcadia, note the inclusion of the R to the entire Atlantic coast north of Virginia. Arcadia derives from the Arcadia district in Greece, which since classical antiquity had the extended meanings of refuge or idyllic place. The Dictionary of Canadian Biography says, Arcadia, the name Verrazano gave to Maryland or Virginia on account of the beauty of the trees, made its first cartographical appearance in the 1548 Gastaldo map and is the only name on that map to survive in Canadian usage. Quote, in 1603 a colony south of the St. Lawrence River between the 40th and 46th parallels was chartered by Henry IV, who recognized the territory as Lacadie. Also in the 17th century, Samuel de Champlain fixed its present orthography with the R omitted. William Francis Ganong, a cartographer, has shown its gradual progress northeastwards, in a succession of maps, to its resting place in the Atlantic provinces of Canada. Also of note is the similarity in the pronunciation of Acadie and the Mi'kma'visim suffix Akadi, which means, a place of abundance. The modern usage is still seen in place names such as Shunakadi, meaning, place of abundant cranberries", or shubanakadi meaning, place of abundant wild potatoes. It is thought that intercultural conversation between early French traders and Mi'kmaq hunters may have resulted in the name Larcadie being changed to Lacadie. Territory 
The borders of French Acadia have never been clearly defined, but the following areas were at some time part of French Acadia. Present-day Nova Scotia with its capital Port Royal. Lost to Great Britain in 1713. Present-day New Brunswick, which remained part of Nova Scotia until 1784 until becoming its own colony in 1785. Île Royale, later Cape Breton Island, with the fortress of Loisburg. Lost to Great Britain in 1763. Île Saint Jean, later Prince Edward Island. Lost to Great Britain in 1763. The part of present-day Maine east of the Kennebec River. Became part of the New England colonies in 1727. 17th century The history of Acadia was significantly influenced by the warfare that took place on its soil during the 17th and 18th century. Prior to that time period, the Mi'kmaq lived in Acadia for centuries. The French arrived in 1604, claiming the Mi'kmaq lands for the King of France. Despite this, the Mi'kmaq tolerated the presence of the French in exchange for favours and trade. Catholic Mi'kmaq and Acadians were the predominant populations in the colony for the next 150 years. Early European colonists, who would later become known as Acadians, were French subjects primarily from the Pliomartin to Poitiers in the Vienne department of west-central France. The first French settlement was established by Pierre Dugua de Monts, governor of Acadia, under the authority of King Henry IV, on St. Croix Island in 1604. The following year, the settlement was moved across the Bay of Fundy to Port Royal after a difficult winter on the island and deaths from scurvy. In 1607 the colony received bad news, King Henry had revoked Sieur de Mont's royal fur monopoly, citing that the income was insufficient to justify supplying the colony further. Thus recalled, the last of the Acadians left Port Royal in August 1607. Their allies, the native Mi'kmaq nation, kept careful watch over their possessions, though. When the former lieutenant governor, Jean de Biencourt de Powderincourt et de Saint Just, returned in 1610, he found Port Royal just as it was left. During the first 80 years, the French and Acadians were in Acadia. There were ten significant battles as the English, Scottish, Dutch, and French fought for possession of the colony. These battles happened at Port Royal, St. John, Cap de Sable, present day Port Latour, Nova Scotia, Jemseg, Costini, and Baleen. During the next 74 years, there were six colonial wars that took place in Nova Scotia and Acadia see the French and Indian Wars as well as Father Rail's War and Father Le Loutre's War. These wars were fought between New England and New France and their respective native allies before the British defeated the French in North America 1763. After the British siege of Port Royal in 1710, mainland Nova Scotia was under the control of British colonial government, but both present-day New Brunswick and virtually all of present-day Maine remained contested territory between New England and New France. The war was fought on two fronts, the southern border of Acadia, which New France defined as the Kennebec River in southern Maine. The other front was in Nova Scotia and involved preventing the British from taking the capital of Acadia, Port Royal see Queen Anne's War, establishing themselves at Canso see Father Rail's War and founding Halifax see Father Le Loutre's War. <laughs> Acadian Civil War From 1640 to 1645, Acadia was plunged into what some historians have described as a civil war. The war was between Port Royal, where the governor of Acadia Charles de Menu Dolnay de Charnassay was stationed, and present-day St. John, New Brunswick, where governor of Acadia Charles de Saint Etienne de la Tour was stationed. There were four major battles in the war, and Dolnay ultimately prevailed over La Tour. <laughs> King Philip's War During King Philip's War 1675 the governor was absent from Acadia having first been imprisoned in Boston during the Dutch occupation of Acadia and Jean Vincent de Body de saint Castin was established at the capital of Acadia, Pentagoe. From there he worked with the Abenaki of Acadia to raid British settlements migrating over the border of Acadia. British retaliation included attacking deep into Acadia in the Battle of Port La Tour 1677. Topic. Wabanaki Confederacy 
In response to King Philip's war in New England, the native peoples in Acadia joined the Wabanaki Confederacy to form a political and military alliance with New France. The Confederacy remained significant military allies to New France through six wars. Until the French and Indian War the Wabanaki Confederacy remained the dominant military force in the region. Catholic missions There were tensions on the border between New England and Acadia, which New France defined as the Kennebec River in southern Maine. English settlers from Massachusetts whose charter included the Maine area had expanded their settlements into Acadia. To secure New France's claim to Acadia, it established Catholic missions churches among the four largest native villages in the region, one on the Kennebec River Norijwak, one further north on the Penobscot River Penobscot, one on the St. John River Medoctec, and one at Shubenacadie St. Anne's Mission. <laughs> King William's War During King William's War 1688 some Acadians, the Wabanaki Confederacy and the French priests participated in defending Acadia at its border with New England, which New France defined as the Kennebec River in southern Maine. Toward this end, the members of the Wabanaki Confederacy, on the St. John River and in other places, joined the New France expedition against present-day Bristol, Maine the Siege of Pemaquid 1689, Salmon Falls and present-day Portland, Maine. In response, the New Englanders retaliated by attacking Port Royal and present-day Guysborough. In 1694, the Wabanaki Confederacy participated in the raid on Oyster River at present-day Durham, New Hampshire. Two years later, New France, led by Pierre Le Moyne d'Iberville, returned and fought a naval battle in the Bay of Fundy before moving on to raid Bristol, Maine again. In retaliation, the New Englanders, led by Benjamin Church, engaged in a raid on Chinecto and the siege of the capital of Acadia at Fort Nashwalk. At the end of the war England returned the territory to France in the Treaty of Ricewick and the borders of Acadia remained the same. 18th century <laughs> Queen Anne's War During Queen Anne's War, some Acadians, the Wabanaki Confederacy and the French priests participated again in defending Acadia at its border with New England. They made numerous raids on New England settlements along the border in the Northeast Coast Campaign and the famous raid on Deerfield. In retaliation, Major Benjamin Church went on his fifth and final expedition to Acadia. He raided present-day Costini, Maine and continued with raids against Grand Prix, Pisiquid, and Chinecto. A few years later, defeated in the Siege of Pemaquid 1696, Captain March made an unsuccessful siege on the capital of Acadia, Port Royal 1707. British forces were successful with the Siege of Port Royal 1710, while the Wabanaki Confederacy were successful in the nearby Battle of Bloody Creek 1711 and continued raids along the main frontier. The 1710 conquest of the Acadian capital of Port Royal during the war was confirmed by the Treaty of Utrecht of 1713. The British conceded to the French, "...the island called Cape Breton, as also all others, both in the mouth of the river of St. Lawrence, and in the gulf of the same name," and "...all manner of liberty to fortify any place or places there." The French established a fortress at Loisburg, Cape Breton, to guard the sea approaches to Quebec. On 23 June 1713, the French residents of Nova Scotia were given one year to declare allegiance to Britain or leave the region. In the meantime, the French signaled their preparedness for future hostilities by beginning the construction of Fortress Loisburg on Ile Royale, now Cape Breton Island. The British grew increasingly alarmed by the prospect of disloyalty in wartime of the Acadians now under their rule. French missionaries worked to maintain the loyalty of Acadians, and to maintain a hold on the mainland part of Acadia. <laughs> Dummer's War During the escalation that preceded Dummer's War 1722 some Acadians, the Wabanaki Confederacy and the French priests persisted in defending Acadia, which had been conceded to the British in the Treaty of Utrecht, at its border against New England. The Mi'kmaq refused to recognize the treaty handing over their land to the English and hostilities resumed. The Mi'kmaq raided the new fort at Canso, Nova Scotia in 1720. 
The Confederacy made numerous raids on New England settlements along the border into New England. Towards the end of January 1722, Governor Samuel Shute chose to launch a punitive expedition against Sebastian Rail, a Jesuit missionary, at Norwichwalk. This breach of the border of Acadia, which had at any rate been ceded to the British, drew all of the tribes of the Wabanaki Confederacy into the conflict. Under potential siege by the Confederacy, in May 1722, Lieutenant Governor John Doucette took 22 Mi'kmaq hostage at Annapolis Royal to prevent the capital from being attacked. In July 1722, the Abenaki and Mi'kmaq created a blockade of Annapolis Royal, with the intent of starving the capital. The natives captured 18 fishing vessels and prisoners from present-day Yarmouth to Canso. They also seized prisoners and vessels from the Bay of Fundy. As a result of the escalating conflict, Massachusetts Governor Shute officially declared war on the 22nd of July 1722. The first battle of Father Rail's War happened in the Nova Scotia Theater. In response to the blockade of Annapolis Royal, at the end of July 1722, New England launched a campaign to end the blockade and retrieve over 86 New England prisoners taken by the natives. One of these operations resulted in the battle at Jedor. The next was a raid on Canso in 1723. Then in July 1724 a group of 60 Mi'kmaq and Maliseets raided Annapolis Royal. As a result of Father Rail's War, present-day Central Maine fell again to the British with the defeat of Sebastian Rail at Norridgewock and the subsequent retreat of the native population from the Kennebec and Penobscot rivers. Topic: <laughs> King George's War. King George's War began when the war declarations from Europe reached the French fortress at Loisburg first, on May 3, 1744, and the forces there wasted little time in beginning hostilities. Concerned about their overland supply lines to Quebec, they first raided the British fishing port of Canso on May 23, and then organized an attack on Annapolis Royal, then the capital of Nova Scotia. However, French forces were delayed in departing Loisburg, and their Mi'kmaq and Maliseet allies decided to attack on their own in early July. Annapolis had received news of the war declaration, and was somewhat prepared when the Indians began besieging Fort Anne. Lacking heavy weapons, the Indians withdrew after a few days. Then, in mid-August, a larger French force arrived before Fort Anne, but was also unable to mount an effective attack or siege against the garrison, which had received supplies and reinforcements from Massachusetts. In 1745, British colonial forces conducted the siege of Port Toulouse Street. Peters and then captured Fortress Loisburg after a siege of six weeks. France launched a major expedition to recover Acadia in 1746. Beset by storms, disease, and finally the death of its commander, the Duc Danville, it returned to France in tatters without reaching its objective. French officer Jean-Baptiste Nicolas Roch de Ramazé also arrived from Quebec and conducted the battle at Port La Joy on Ile Saint Jean and the Battle of Grand Pré. Topic: <laughs> Father Le Loutre's War, 1749 to 1755. Despite the British capture of the Acadian capital in the Siege of Port Royal 1710, Nova Scotia remained primarily occupied by Catholic Acadians and Mi'kmaq. To prevent the establishment of Protestant settlements in the region, Mi'kmaq raided the early British settlements of present-day Shelburne 1715 and Canso 1720. A generation later, Father Le Loutre's war began when Edward Cornwallis arrived to establish Halifax with 13 transports on 21 June 1749. The British quickly began to build other settlements. To guard against Mi'kmaq, Acadian and French attacks on the new Protestant settlements, they erected fortifications in Halifax Citadel Hill 1749, Dartmouth 1750, Bedford, Fort Sackville 1751, Lunenburg 1753 and Lawrencetown 1754. There were numerous Mi'kmaq and Acadian raids on these villages such as the raid on Dartmouth 1751. Within 18 months of establishing Halifax, the British also took firm control of peninsular Nova Scotia by building fortifications in all the major Acadian communities, present-day Windsor Fort Edward, 1750, Grand Prix Fort Vieux Logis, 1749 and Chinecto Fort Lawrence, 1750, a British fort already existed at the other major Acadian centre of Annapolis Royal, Nova Scotia. 
Kobequid remained without a fort. Numerous Mi'kmaq and Akkadian raids took place against these fortifications, such as the Siege of Grand Prix, 1749. Topic: <laughs> French and Indian War. In the years after the British conquest, the Acadians refused to swear unconditional oaths of allegiance to the British crown. During this time period some Acadians participated in militia operations against the British and maintained vital supply lines to Fortress Loisburg and Fort Beausejour. During the French and Indian War, the British sought to neutralize any military threat Acadians posed and to interrupt the vital supply lines Acadians provided to Loisburg by deporting them. This process began in 1755, after the British captured Fort Bojor and began the expulsion of the Acadians with the Bay of Fundy campaign. Between 6 and 7,000 Acadians were expelled from Nova Scotia to the lower British American colonies. Some Acadians eluded capture by fleeing deep into the wilderness or into French-controlled Canada. The Quebec town of Lacadie now a sector of Saint -Jean -Sur -Richelieu, was founded by expelled Acadians. After the Siege of Loisburg 1758, a second wave of the expulsion began with the St. John River Campaign, Petit Kodiak River Campaign, Gulf of St. Lawrence Campaign and the Ile St. Jean Campaign. The Acadians and the Wabanaki Confederacy created a significant resistance to the British throughout the war. They repeatedly raided Canso, Lunenburg, Halifax, Chinecto and into New England. Any pretense that France might maintain or regain control over the remnants of Acadia came to an end with the fall of Montreal in 1760 and the 1763 Treaty of Paris, which permanently ceded almost all of eastern New France to Britain. In 1763, Britain would designate lands west of the Appalachians as the Indian Reserve but did not respect Mi'kmaq title to the Atlantic region, claiming title was obtained from the French. The Mi'kmaq remain in Acadia to this day. After 1764, many exiled Acadians finally settled in Louisiana, which had been transferred by France to Spain at the end of the French and Indian War. The demonym Acadian was corrupted to Cajun, which was first used as a pejorative term until its later mainstream acceptance. Britain eventually moderated its policies and allowed Acadians to return to Nova Scotia. Notable military figures of Acadia The following list includes those who were born in Acadia or those who became naturalized citizens prior to the fall of the French in the region in 1763. Those who came for brief periods from other countries are not included e.g. John Gorham, Edward Cornwallis, James Wolfe, Boishebert, etc. 17th–18th century Others Charles de Saint-Étienne de la Tour, Civil War in Acadia Chief Madakawando, King William's War John Giles, King William's War Father Louis Pierre Thury, King William's War Pierre Maisonat dit Baptiste, Queen Anne's War Charles Morris, Jurist, King George's War Pierre Mellard, Father Le Loutre's War Joseph Nicolas Gautier, Father Le Loutre's War Pierre II Surette, French and Indian War Topic. Government Acadia was located in territory disputed between France and Great Britain. England controlled the area from 1621 to 1632 see William Alexander, 1st Earl of Stirling and again from 1654 until 1670 see William Crown and Thomas Temple, with control permanently regained by its successor state, the Kingdom of Great Britain, in 1710 ceded under the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713. Although France controlled the territory in the remaining periods, French monarchs consistently neglected Acadia. Civil government under the French regime was held by a series of governors see List of Governors of Acadia. The government of New France was located in Quebec, but it had only nominal authority over the Acadians. The Acadians implemented village self-rule. Even after Canada had given up its elected spokesman, the Acadians continued to demand a say in their own government, as late as 1706 petitioning the monarchy to allow them to elect spokesmen each year by a plurality of voices. In a sign of his indifference to the colony, Louis XV agreed to their demand. 
This representative assembly was a direct offshoot of a government system that developed out of the seigneurial and church parish imported from Europe. The seigneurial system was a set of legal regimes and practices pertaining to local landholding, politics, economics, and jurisprudence. It should be noted that many of the French governors of Acadia prior to Hector Dandinier de Grandfontaine held seigneuries in Acadia. As seigneur, in addition to the power held as governor, they held the right to grant land, collect their seigneurial rents, and act in judgment over disputes within their domain. After Acadia came under direct royal rule under Grandfontaine the seigneurs continued to fulfill governance roles. The Acadian seigneurial system came to an end when the British Crown bought the seigneurial rights in the 1730s. The Catholic parish system along with the accompanying parish priest also aided in the development Acadian self-government. Priests, given their respected position, often assisted the community in representation with the civil government located at Port Royal, Annapolis Royal. Within each parish the Acadians used the elected wardens of the Conseil de Fabrique to administer more than just the church's affairs in the parishes. The Acadians extended this system to see to the administrative needs of the community in general. The Acadians protected this structure from the priests and were no mere subordinates to clerical authority. Wardens were always suspicious of any interference by the priests in the life of the rural parish, an institution which was largely a creation of the inhabitants. During the British regime, many of the deputies were drawn from this Margulier group. The Acadians occupied a borderland region of the British and French empires. As such, the Acadian homeland was subjected to the ravages of war on numerous occasions. Through experience the Acadians learned to distrust imperial authorities British and French. This is evidenced in a small way when Acadians were uncooperative with census takers. Administrators complained of constant infighting among the population, which filed many petty civil suits with colonial magistrates. Most of these were over boundary lines, as the Acadians were very quick to protect their new lands. Topic governance under the British After 1710 After 1710, the British military administration continued to utilise the deputy system the Acadians had developed under French colonial rule. Prior to 1732 the deputies were appointed by the governor from men in the districts of Acadian families as ancientest and most considerable in lands and possessions. This appears to be in contravention of various British penal laws which made it nearly impossible for Roman Catholics and Protestant recusants to hold military and government positions. The need for effective administration and communication in many of the British colonies trumped the laws. In 1732 the governance institution was formalised. Under the formalised system the colony was divided into eight districts. Annually on October 11 free elections were to take place where each district, depending on its size, was to elect two, three, or four deputies. In observance of the Lord's Day, if October 11 fell on a Sunday the elections were to take place on the immediately following Monday. Notice of the annual election was to be given in all districts 30 days before the election date. Immediately following election, deputies, both outgoing and incoming, were to report to Annapolis Royal to receive the governor's approval and instructions. Prior to 1732 deputies had complained about the time and expense of holding office and carrying out their duties. Under the new elected deputy system each district was to provide for the expenses of their elected deputies. The duties of the deputies were broad and included reporting to the government in council the affairs of the districts, distribution of government proclamations, assistance in the settlement of various local disputes primarily related to land, and ensuring that various weights and measures used in trade were conformable to the standard. In addition to deputies, several other public positions existed. Each district had a clerk who worked closely with the deputies and under his duties recorded the records and orders of government, deeds and conveyances, and kept other public records. With the rapid expansion of the Acadian populace, there was also a growing number of cattle and sheep. The burgeoning herds and flocks, often free-ranging, necessitated the creation of the position of overseer of flocks. These individuals controlled where the flocks grazed, settled disputes and recorded the names of individuals slaughtering animals to ensure proper ownership. Skins and hides were inspected for brands. After the purchase by the British Crown of the seigneurial rights in Acadia, various rents and fees were due to the Crown. In the Minas, Pisiquid and Cobiquid districts the seigneurial fees were collected by the collector and receiver of all His Majesty's quit rents, dues, or revenues. The collector was to keep a record of all rents and other fees collected, submit the rents to Annapolis Royal, and retain 15% to cover his expenses. 
Topic Demographics After a 1692 visit, Antoine Lamet de la Moth, seer de Cadillac, described the Acadian men as well built, of good height, and they would be accepted without difficulty as soldiers in a guard's regiment. They are well proportioned and their hair is usually blonde. They are robust, and will endure great fatigue. They are fine subjects of the king, passionately loving the French of Europe. Charles Morris describes the Acadians as being, tall and well proportioned, they delight much in wearing long hair, they are of dark complexion, in general, and somewhat of the mixture of Indians, but there are some of a light complexion. They retain the language and customs of their neighbours the French, with a mixed affectation of the native Indians, and imitate them in their haunting and wild tones in their merriment, they are naturally full cheer and merry, subtle, speak and promise fair, most Acadians were illiterate, and many of the records, including notarial deeds, were destroyed or scattered during the Great Expulsion. For a time, Port Royal did have schools, but these were closed when the British excluded Roman Catholic religious orders from operating in Acadia. Despite their nominal faith, Acadians often worked on Sundays and religious holidays. Before 1654, trading companies and patent holders concerned with fishing recruited men in France to come to Acadia to work at the commercial outposts. The original Acadian population was a small number of indentured servants and soldiers brought by the fur trading companies. Gradually, fishermen began settling in the area as well, rather than return to France with the seasonal fishing fleet. The majority of the recruiting took place at La Rochelle. Between 1653 and 1654, 104 men were recruited at La Rochelle. Of these, 31% were builders, 15% were soldiers and sailors, 8% were food preparers, 6.7% were farm workers, and an additional 6.7% worked in the clothing trades. 55% of Acadia's first families came from western and west-central France, primarily from Poitou, Annas, Angamois, and Saint-Ange. Over 85% of these of the total, were former residents of the La Chasse area of Poitou. Many of the families who arrived in 1632 with Razali shared some blood ties, those not related by blood shared cultural ties with the others. The number of original immigrants was very small, and only about 100 surnames existed within the Acadian community. Although the majority of Acadian settlers came from France there were also members of the populace from Ireland, Spain both Spanish and Basque, Portugal, England, Scotland, Belgium Flemish, Channel Islands, and Croatia. Some of the earliest settlers married women of the local Mi'kmaq tribe who had converted to Roman Catholicism. A Parisian lawyer, Marc Lescarbot, who spent just over a year in Acadia, arriving in May 1606, described the Mi'kmaq as having "...courage, fidelity, generosity, and humanity, and their hospitality is so innate and praiseworthy that they receive among them every man who is not an enemy. They are not simpletons. So that if we commonly call them savages, the word is abusive and unmerited." Most of the immigrants to Acadia were peasants in Europe, making them social equals in this new context. The colony had limited economic support or cultural contacts with France, leaving a «social vacuum» that allowed «individual talents and industry to supplant inherited social position as the measure of a man's worth». Acadians lived as social equals, with the elderly and priests considered slightly superior. Unlike the French colonists in Canada and the early English colonies in Plymouth and Jamestown, Acadians maintained an extended kinship system, and the large extended families assisted in building homes and barns, as well as cultivating and harvesting crops. They also relied on interfamily cooperation to accomplish community goals, such as building dikes to reclaim tidal marshes. Marriages were generally not love matches but were arranged for economic or social reasons. Parental consent was required for anyone under 25 who wished to marry, and both the mother's and father's consent was recorded in the marriage deed. Divorce was not permitted in New France, and annulments were almost impossible to get. Legal separation was offered as an option but was seldom used. The Acadians were suspicious of outsiders and on occasion did not readily cooperate with census takers. The first reliable population figures for the area came with the census of 1671, which noted fewer than 450 people. By 1714, the Acadian population had expanded to 2,528 individuals, mostly from natural increase rather than immigration. Most Acadian women in the 18th century gave birth to living children an average of 11 times. 
Although these numbers are identical to those in Canada, 75% of Acadian children reached adulthood, many more than in other parts of New France. The isolation of the Acadian communities meant the people were not exposed to many of the imported epidemics, allowing the children to remain healthier. In the 18th century, some Acadians migrated to nearby Ile Saint Jean, now Prince Edward Island, to take advantage of the fertile cropland. In 1732, the island had 347 settlers, but within 25 years, its population had expanded to 5,000 Europeans. The bulk of this population explosion on Ile Saint Jean took place in the early 1750s and has as its source Acadians removing themselves during the rising tensions on peninsular Nova Scotia after the settlement of Halifax in 1749. Le Loutre played a role in these removals through acts of encouragement and threats. The exodus to Ile Saint Jean became a flood with refugees fleeing British held territory after the initial expulsions of 1755. In 1714, a few Acadian families emigrated to Ile Royale. These families had little property. But for the majority of Acadians, they could not be enticed by the French government to abandon their heritage and the land of their forefathers for an area which was unknown and uncultivated. Economy <inaudible> 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 Most Acadian households were self-sufficient, with families engaged in subsistence farming only for a few years while they established their farms. Very rapidly the Acadians established productive farms that yielded surplus crops that allowed them to trade with both Boston and Loisburg. Farms tended to remain small plots of land worked by individual families rather than slave labor. The highly productive diked marshlands and cleared uplands produced an abundance of fodder that supported significant production of cows, sheep and pigs. Farmers grew various grains, wheat, oats, barley, hops and rye, vegetables, peas, cabbage, turnips, onions, carrots, chives, shallots, asparagus, parsnips and beets, fruit, apples, pears, cherries, plums, raspberry and white strawberry. In addition they grew crops of hemp and flax for the production of cloth, rope, etc. From the rivers, estuaries and seas they harvested shad, smelts, gaspero, cod, salmon, bass, etc., utilizing fish traps in the rivers, weirs in the intertidal zone and from the sea with lines and nets from their boats. The fishery was pursued on a commercial basis as in 1715 at the Minas Basin settlements, when the Acadian population there numbered only in the hundreds, they had between 30 to 40 sail of vessels, built by themselves, which they employ in fishing," reported Lieutenant Governor Thomas Caulfield to the Board of Trade. Charles Morris observed the Acadians at Minas hunting beluga whales. The Acadians also varied their diets by hunting for moose, hare, ducks and geese, and pigeon. After 1630, the Acadians began to build dikes and drain the sea marsh above Port Royal. The high salinity of the reclaimed coastal marshland meant that the land would need to sit for three years after it was drained before it could be cultivated. The land reclamation techniques that were used closely resembled the enclosures near La Rochelle that helped make solar salt. As time progressed, the Acadian agriculture improved, and Acadians traded with the British colonies in New England to gain ironware, fine cloth, rum, and salt. During the French administration of Acadia, this trade was illegal, but it did not stop some English traders from establishing small stores in Port Royal. Under English rule, the Acadians traded with New England and often smuggled their excess food to Boston merchants waiting at Bay Vert for transshipment to the French at Loisburg on Cape Breton Island. Many adult sons who did not inherit land from their parents settled on adjacent vacant lands to remain close to their families. As the Acadian population expanded and available land became limited around Port Royal, new settlements took root to the northeast, in the upper Bay of Fundy, including Mines, Pisiquid, and Bobasson. Many of the pioneers into that area persuaded some of their relatives to accompany them, and most of the frontier settlements contained only five to ten interrelated family units. Topic see also Acadia Portal Acadian French Cajun Former Colonies and Territories in Canada List of Acadians List of Governors of Acadia Military History of Nova Scotia Military History of the Acadians Acadia National Park Topic References Notes Citations Bibliography Topic Further reading Topic External links Acadian Heritage Portal in French Acadian History, Genealogy and Folklore National Society of Acadia in French Acadian Ancestral Home by Lucie Leblanc Consentino, a repository repository for Akkadian history and genealogy